Today I'm going to be taking one jazzy sample and making two different types of trap beats with it. With this sample right here. And if you know what the sample is, please don't say in the comments section below, I don't want to go to jail. I'm going to be making two different types of trap beats. One that uses a more simple, straightforward method of sampling and another with a more advanced technique. So let's get into it. guys the drum kit is available to download in the description box below for free like subscribe do all that fun stuff as well starting off I'll play the sample again with this type of sample you can hear it's a lot more monotonous and a lot more simple but using these types of samples can be very powerful and by the end of the video I'm gonna show you exactly why when it comes to basic sampling, what you want to start off with is just make your chops on each of the different note changes. Looking at the sample visually, I can see the different areas where there's just sharp peaks, and that sort of tells me that there's going to be different notes playing, and that's where I'm going to start making my chops in the sample. Now that I have my chops created, the name of the game now is to create a loop. What you're almost doing is you're coming up with your own chord progression with the chops that you've created. For example, if I do this, that's almost like a two chord progression there. So what we're trying to do is come up with a chord progression that we like, and usually it's best to keep things simple and you'll see why soon. All right, here's eventually what I came up with. All right, as you can see, what I did was I duplicated the exact same sample and I pitched it up five semitones. So if you guys watched my prior video on picking better samples, you know exactly why I chose this sample. It just makes for an easier sample to manipulate and contort and make something new, create new textures and new layers easily using a very open type of sample. So if you have trouble finding samples, picking good samples for your beats, I really recommend you watch that video. What I did was I basically took this initial one bar loop here. And I just added slight variations in the second and fourth bar in order to make this a four bar loop instead of just a simple one bar loop. As you guys can see, I cut this one note at the end here into two different sections. So when I play them in different parts of the beat, they sound a little bit different and it helps keep the beat feeling a little bit less monotonous. As you guys can see, the chops aren't 100% precise. There are sections where there is a little bit of gaps and spaces in between. And so what I'm gonna start doing is adding effects on top in order to smooth everything out a little bit. After adding a whole bunch of effects, this is how it sounds. I added an EQ to get rid of some of the frequencies that I don't need. And then I added form and shifting on top just to help brighten up the sample a little bit and add a little bit more of an interesting texture to it. And then I added a flanger on top as well as delay just to help the sample be a little bit more wide in the mix and take up more room. The delay as well is going to definitely help in making our sample sound a lot smoother. This is the technique that I like to do. I'll add delay and reverb just to help smoothen out the sample. I add a gross beat as well just to create a little bit of variance at the end of each of the bars. It has that tape stop effect. And at the end I added a saturation effect just to help widen the frequency range of the sample and again just bring some warmth and a little bit more presence to the sample. You can hear with the loop right now, it still feels like there are some gaps and spaces and the sample feels a little bit jarring, but once I add the drums on top, that's all gonna go away. The great thing about using a monotonous sample like this is that it frees us up to do what we want melodically as opposed to a sample that had a lot going on in it that was very dense and very textured and we'd have to follow along with what the sample is doing melodically. Now we have a lot more room to do what we want. Again, it's all about balance and making sure we don't overproduce. I 
added more layers on top just to help fill the beat out a little bit more. There you have it, a simple way of chopping up your samples and we already have one beat. Next step is a more advanced type of technique when it comes to sampling. With this technique, what we're gonna do is morph the sample and treat it like it's its own instrument. So with this technique, I'm not gonna even bother sampling. I'm just gonna start playing around, start manipulating and shifting things around, start contorting the sample in order to create a different instrument and a different type of layer than what we already have. This is gonna require some pretty heavy experimentation. So the first layer that I have created here, what I did was I chopped the sample length in half as you can see. I also reversed the sample and pitched it up 500 cents. But if I play the sample at eight semitones higher, I get this cool loop here. Now I'm going to run a bunch of effects on it just to help it sit better in the mix. So what I did was I EQ'd some of the frequencies that I don't need once again. I don't need much of the high frequencies in the sample just because I know this is a trap beat. I'm going to have the hi hats so I'm going to take up the high end so I don't need those. I'm more focused in on the mid range of the sample. This is a concept that I talked about a couple of weeks ago when I made the video about making three different trap beats, so I'll put the link to that right above my head. I also added the sequence effect on top just to help the sample sound like it's more rhythmic. And then I added a flanger and some more EQ on top. And this is how the layer sounds now. All right, now it's time to duplicate the sample and try to experiment once again and come up with a different layer in the beat. All right, so I noticed if I play these notes an octave higher, I can probably squeeze out an entirely new layer just because I'm using the exact same sample. So if I play something an octave higher, it's gonna fit in a lot better. Now I'm gonna try to manipulate the sound using a bunch of different effects to help it fit a lot better and sound actually interesting and good in the beat. Here's what I came up with eventually. I added a bunch of effects on top just to get this crazy sound now. There's no rhyme or reason to this. What I did, as you can see, it was just get rid of frequencies that I don't like, try to add frequencies that I do like, try to add a little bit more space with the sample, just run a whole bunch of different effects just to try to make it sound better and better in the beat. It's all about taking your sounds and try to make it as interesting as possible to you. So now that I have this sound, what I'm gonna to try to do is play it as if it were an instrument. This is one of the things that I like about this technique where you can take a small segment of the sample and just create an entirely new instrument out of it. All right, so here's the loop that I eventually came up with. As you can see, I multiplied the amount of layers that I have. And I just added some slight variation in between them. I changed the length just like a tiny bit just to help bring up another section of the sample and create a little bit of a different tonality once again. Now I'm gonna start adding the drums in. Once again, just like our last beat, this type of sample allows me just to be a lot more free and expressive with whatever melody I want to come up with. And now to add some extra fun layers on top in the beat. 
there you have it, two trap beats that use the exact same jazzy sample, but using a different type of sampling technique, I was able to make two completely different types of trap beats. Which of these beats did you like better? Let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, guys, the download for the free drum kit is in the description box below. Like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next Tuesday.